<laughs> We're like wondering why like you haven't done Beavis and Butthead yet. <laughs> When it comes to pushing the boundaries, very few animated shows manage to do it with such pizzazz as Beavis and Butthead. This is the coolest thing I have ever seen. Remember like, when you were little and your parents refused to let you watch it, but you totally did anyway because it was an awesome show and you're an awesome person for watching it? I'm Cornholio, I mean Johnny, sorry, and we're here to give you the story behind everyone's favorite teenage delinquents, Beavis and Butthead. So get ready, because Cartoon Hangover is counting down the 107 facts that you should know about Beavis and Butthead. Number one. Beavis and Butthead was an American adult television sitcom created by the King of the Hill show creator, Mike Judge. Number two, Judge was a one-time physics student who spent several years as a rhythm and blues bassist for a group in Texas called Anson Funderburg and the Rockets. Number three, Judge wasn't much of an animator before the series. He bought himself some cheap equipment and actually taught himself how to animate. Number four, Judge came up with Beavis first and is his favorite of the two. Number five, Beavis was named after a child from Judge's old neighborhood. Number six, it's also rumored that Beavis's design was a mashup between a nerdy classmate Judge knew from high school and his own artistic rendering of Barry Manilow. Number seven, Judge created Butthead with the idea of an archetypal slacker high school student and also incorporated the look, name, and voice of a friend who invited anyone to kick him on his butt and called himself Iron Butt. I'm going to go ahead and assume that Judge is the more successful of the two. Number eight, Beavis and Butthead are high school freshmen and their lives are centered around TV, junk food, shopping malls, heavy metal music, and trying to score with chicks. Hey, baby. Number 9. We know that Beavis and Butthead resided in the city of Highland, but the state was never revealed. Number 10. Though Judge has said he imagined Beavis and Butthead as a couple of slacker students in the actual Highland High School in Albuquerque, New Mexico, where he's from. Number 11. Judge also imagined the boys having single moms, saying, I just remember that I knew this kid in the 6th grade and he had a single mom. I do imagine Beavis and Butthead having single moms, but you never saw this kid's mom ever. Like, I'd be at the grocery store with my parents and my brothers and sister, and there's Steve, wandering around by himself. I think his mom worked the night shift somewhere and slept all day. There were kids like that, or maybe they were on welfare, who knows, but that's kind of how I look at it, I guess. Number 12. Judge used to work as an engineer. That's quite the career change, and I'm sure his parents thought he was a butthead when he told him he wanted to move to animation instead. Number 13. When asked if Judge had ever gone to art school, he told the story of an incident from his childhood. He said, When I was about 9 or 10 years old, my mom took me to a cartoon class at the YMCA in Albuquerque, New Mexico. The teacher, I suspect, was a junkie. We saw him hitchhiking on the street one day when we were driving home from school, and that was the end of my art training. I've never taken another art class. Number 14. The first Beavis and Butthead cartoon was Frog Baseball, and it debuted at the International Festival of Animation. The premise was two laughing idiots who bashed frogs with baseball. Baseball bats. MTV then bought the episode for its late night show, Liquid Television. Number 15. Judge later confirmed Frog Baseball was not the first Beavis and Butthead animation produced, but rather the fourth. Number 16. The cartoon airing on Liquid Television led Judge to develop it into a show for MTV. It debuted March 1993. Number 17. Before receiving the call to do Beavis and Butthead for MTV, Judge had considered becoming a math teacher. Number 18. Mike Judge wrote the show's theme song. He meant to have someone else record it, but never really got around to it. Number 19. Both Beavis and Butthead were voiced by Mike Judge. Number 20. Judge also voiced David Van Driesen, the boy's hippie teacher. Van Driesen might be the only person in the world that actually cares about them. Number 21. Adam Welsh voiced Beavis and Butthead's dorky neighbor, Stuart Stevenson. Number 22. Butthead is unaware of his gum showing. He even denied it once and convinced Beavis it wasn't true. Number 23. One of the premises of the show was Beavis and Butthead adding childish commentary over music videos. Judge confirmed this dialogue was in fact improvised. Number 24. One of the challenges of the show was to keep the two characters truly dumb. In one episode, Beavis's classmates had Beavis envy because he received a school pass. The line was cut since it seemed too clever for Beavis. Number 25. Though Judge admitted to making the boys smarter than they were during their music video commentaries. Number 26. The origin of music videos on Beavis and Butthead started with Judge selecting music videos based on things he either liked or didn't like, and then he began looking for material that would just be good joke fodder. With Howard Stern as his influence, he started having having Beavis and Butthead just talk about anything, even when it was unrelated to the music video itself. Number 27. Beavis and Butthead's neighbor Tom Anderson's middle initial is T. Number 28. Anderson's voice was a prototype for Hank Hill. <laughs> the main protagonist for Judge's other show, King of the Hill. However, the characters were completely different. Judge said, Hank is a very different character. He is the hero, and he is not anywhere near as clueless as Tom Anderson. In Beavis and Butthead, everyone is portrayed negatively in a big way. This is a little different. 
Number 29. Tom Anderson and Hank Hill were based on a conglomeration of some retired military men Judge encountered on his paper route. Number 30. On the subject of King and the Hill, the speaking style of Boomhauer, also done by Judge, was based on a guy who called in to complain about Beavis and Butthead. Number 31. Toby Huss provided additional voices on the show. He would later work on King of the Hill as Cotton Hill, Khan, and many others. Number 32. Pamela Alden voiced porn star Crystal on Beavis and Butthead. She also voiced Bobby Hill on King of the Hill. Number 33. Comedian Gilbert Gottfried also made a cameo on the show as the character Gus Baker. Number 34. Didn't think Judge could voice any more characters? Well, think again. He also does Bradley Buzzcut, Principal McVicker, and Stewart's father, Mr. Stevenson. Number 35. Judge's band director was the model for Principal McVicker. Number 36. It's a popular rumor that the appearance of Beavis and Butthead were actually modeled on the department of physics faculty at the college judge attended, University of California, San Diego. Number 37. Beavis's alter ego, Cornholio, was completely improvised. Judge said, I had been thinking it would be cool to try to record a show without a script, just improvise it on the spot. Just sort of hit me one night that Beavis should put on his t-shirt over his head and start babbling. I don't really know what I was thinking with the name Cornholio. I basically just improvised the episode, along with Chris Brown prodding me along. Number 38. Cornholio claims to be from Lake Titicaca, which is a lake that borders Bolivia and Peru. Number 39. In earlier episodes, Butthead is seen wearing a Slayer t-shirt instead of his usual Metallica shirt. Number 40. Throughout the show, their names are constantly mispronounced. Their neighbor, Tom Anderson, calls them by an assortment of names such as Butthole and Joe. In the film, they are called Travis and Bobhead by the elderly lady they meet on their trip. Number 41. Beavis and Butthead idolize and possibly have a crush on the hoodlum Todd Lanuzzi. Number 42. Beavis and Butthead's job at Burger World is a reference from Weird Al Yankovic's parody song fat. Number 43. The show was widely attacked by critics and parents alike. In October 1993, a five-year-old boy set fire to his Ohio home, taking the life of his two-year-old sister. His mother blamed the show, and MTV quickly canceled the show's early evening airing and moved it to late night. MTV also removed all fire mentions and references from the previous episodes and added a disclaimer. Number 44. Beavis and Butthead were in regular trouble for negatively influencing children. In the summer of 1993, the show was blamed for the death of a man's pet cat who was blown up with a firecracker after the show mentioned using a firecracker on a cat. Number 45. Despite the strikes against his own show, Judge defended it. As to the charge that his work is dumbing us down, Judge says, are you going to say that you shouldn't do a show about real life? Should TV just be showing only straight A students and people with good jobs? The Cosby show was like a doctor, a lawyer, and kids who go to Princeton. After a while, you start to feel inadequate or weird or something. Number 46. Although the show was vulgar and offensive, Judge actually was disturbed by some of his choices. He stated, I don't mind it's being vulgar if it's really funny, but I'll be the first to admit that there are times when it's vulgar and not funny. And that's when I toss and turn at night and I say, why did I record that line? Number 47. The 1993 issue of Rolling Stone magazine that featured Beavis and Butthead was the highest selling issue that year. Number 48. While Beavis and Butthead were known to wear shirts that had bands ACDC and Metallica on them, the official merchandise featuring the characters didn't have the labels. This is because of copyright and MTV would have had to pay extra just to display them on the merchandise. Number 49. During a 1993 U.S. Senate hearing regarding TV violence, Senator Ernest F. Hollings incorrectly referred to Beavis and Butthead as Buff Coat and Beaver. I know, I know, a politician who's out of touch? Weird, right? Number 50. The Beavis and Butthead Do Christmas Special featured parodies of such popular Christmas classics as A Christmas Carol and It's a Wonderful Life. That's right. Number 51. The show had a movie spinoff called Beavis and Butthead Do America in 1996. Number 52. The movie featured a vast cast of actors, including Bruce Willis, Demi Moore, Cloris Leachman, Robert Stack, Eric Bogosian, Richard Linklater, David Letterman, and Greg Kinnear. Number 53. Their full names are never mentioned on the show, but it was suggested in the movie that Butthead's actual name is Butthead. In one scene, one of the elderly characters asks him his last name, and he tells her it's Head. My first name's Butt. Number 54. The song Love Roller Coaster featured in Beavis and Butthead Do America was originally by the Ohio Players, but the version of the song in this film was a cover performed by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Number 55. There was a deleted scene from the movie where the boys defaced the Declaration of Independence. They left it out because it was considered too offensive. Number 56. MTV had plans to make another Beavis and Butthead movie after the success of the first one, but alas, no such luck. Number 57. Beavis and Butthead had a female friend by the name of Daria Morgendorfer. She was created with Janine Garofalo and Darlene Connor in mind. Number 58. Daria would eventually leave Highland to go to a new town and start a new life. This was the basis 
of her own spin-off series, Daria. Number 59. Daria was created in hopes to bring in a stronger female audience to MTV, much like how Beavis and Butthead brought a stronger male audience. Number 60. Daria's voice actress, Tracy Grandstaff, also wrote for the Beavis and Butthead episode, True Crime. Number 61. Beavis and Butthead ended in 1997, but was revived again in 2011. Number 62. Despite the rumors, the real reason the show ended was because Judge was struggling to meet the overwhelming demand for new episodes. Number 63. In 2011, there was a San Diego Comic Con panel for Beavis and Butthead's return. The panel was hosted by Mike Judge and Jackass host Johnny Knoxville. Number 64. Judge revealed that he brought back Beavis and Butthead in 2011 because television was just getting too smart. Number 65. Kanye West really wanted one of his videos to be covered on the show, but the owner of 6% of the songwriting on the video declined. 6%! Kanye should have just let that guy know that Beavis and Butthead was one of the greatest TV shows of all time! Number 66. Unlike the 90s rendition of the show, the 2011 Beavis and Butthead show started commenting on other MTV shows such as 16 and Pregnant and Jersey Shore. Number 67. In the 2011 revisiting, references to fire were once again allowed to be muttered. Number 68. Sadly, Daria did not return for the 2011 reboot of the series despite Judge saying she'd make a surprise cameo. Number 69. <laughs> Beavis and Butthead are currently in TV limbo as creators try to find a new network for it. Number 70. The show is animated partly in Seoul, Korea. Number 71. Judge considered a live action take on Beavis and Butthead at one point, saying, A long time ago, Johnny Depp had said to me that he really wanted to play Beavis. He was doing that Don Juan DeMarco movie with Marlon Brando, and he said Marlon Brando used to imitate Butthead, and he would do Beavis. Number 72. Many saw Beavis and Butthead as an insult to MTV's core audience with its stupid slacker main characters. However, if anything, they represented a popular perception of MTV viewers at the time, while simultaneously congratulating those viewers on being clever enough to be in on the joke and laugh at those who they thought were stupid enough not to. Number 73. Simpsons creator Matt Groening was a fan of the show. He said, I like Beavis and Butthead. Anything that takes the heat off Bart Simpson being responsible for the downfall of Western civilization. Number 74. There were also documented reports of South Dakota schools outlawing Beavis and Butthead related clothing. Outlawing? Well, at least those kids still have their Tamagotchis, I guess. Number 75. Beavis and Butthead actually struggles with syndication airings due to music video copyright being exclusive to MTV. Number 76. MTV originally only ordered 65 episodes. The final number ended up being 199 episodes. Number 77. Judge stated that Cheech and Chong and Jerry Lewis's Nutty Professor were big influences on Beavis and Butthead. Number 78. When asked about the whereabouts of Beavis and Butthead's parents, Judge once responded, they're in the same place Charlie Brown's parents are. Number 79. Beavis and Butthead's dorky friend Stuart always wore a Winger t-shirt, which, according to Winger frontman Kip Winger, single-handedly killed the band's career. Number 80. Kip Winger confirmed he and Mike Judge settled any ill will and are now on good terms with each other. Number 81. The show did have some positive impact on rapper T-Baby, who blew up after the show roasted her. Number 82. Yvette Kaplan, the supervising director of Beavis and Butthead, also served as a director on the original Nickelodeon, Doug. Number 83. David X. Cohen, known for his work on Futurama and The Simpsons, also worked on Beavis and Butthead. Number 84. Mike Judge went on to voice Kenny Unhooded in South Park, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. Number 85. Other than King of the Hill, Judge created other works such as Office Space, Extract, Idiocracy, in Silicon Valley. Number 86. Beavis and Butthead have made appearances on the Academy Awards and the Cartoon Network Adult Swim series Robot Chicken and Space Ghost Coast to Coast. Number 87. On top of him being in the film, Beavis and Butthead were also on David Letterman's show in 1996. Number 88. The boys weren't loyal to Letterman, though. They also made appearances on the talk show Jimmy Kimmel Live. Number 89. The boys starred in a Thanksgiving special with Kurt Loder. I really miss that Kurt Loder. Number 90. Beavis and Butthead made a cameo on the MT TV Claymation series, Celebrity Deathmatch. Number 91. They also showed up briefly in the film Austin Powers, The International Man of Mystery. Number 92. Beavis and Butthead once did an animated intro for an ACDC concert. Number 93. There was a voiceover cameo of the boys in the live action film Airheads. When a radio DJ is taking call in requests, Beavis and Butthead call in. Judge actually provided the voices for the movie. Number 94. 
before. The ABC sitcom Step by Step featured two male actors who resembled and act like Beavis and Butthead. Number 95. The Tiny Toon Adventure Spring Break special featured furry parodies of Beavis and Butthead called Beaver and Big Head. Number 96. Beavis and Butthead even had a comic book series released by Marvel Comics. Think they'll show up at the end of Civil War? It's gotta at least have like a post credit sequence, right? Number 97. There were also several video games such as Virtual Stupidity, Bung Hole in One, and Beavis and Butthead Do You. Number 98. According to a Rolling Stones interview, Beavis and Butthead posters sold better than Jurassic Parks. Number 99. In 1994, Beavis and Butthead was nominated at the Cable Ace Awards for Best Comedy Series. Numero 100. In 1997, Beavis and Butthead Do America was nominated for Best On-Screen Duo at the MTV Movie Awards. Number 101. Mike Judge was also nominated for an Oath to Film Award in 1997 for Best Voiceover Performance for Beavis and Butthead Do America. Number 102. In 1998, John Frizzle won the BMI Film Music Award for his work on the movie. Number 103. However, Beavis and Butthead Do America wasn't loved by everyone. In 1997, it was nominated for two Razzie Awards, Worst New Star and Worst Screen Couple. Number 104. In 2006, The Boys' trademark <laughs> made TV Land's list of 100 greatest TV catchphrases. Number 105. In 2012, Beavis and Butthead made TV Guide's list of top 60 greatest TV cartoons of all time. Number 106. In April 2015, a man who went by the name The Great Cornholio was arrested after fleeing a traffic stop. Number 107. Judge believes that Beavis and Butthead are timeless, in part due to their unhip dialogue and ways. Thank you all for watching Cartoon Hangover's 107 facts that you should know about Beavis and Butthead. If you like this one, perhaps you'd like some more of these other shows. And if there's another movie or TV show we need to cover, let us know in the comments. Because remember, Frederator loves you, even if you are a butthead.